This video presentation is going to give a discussion of how to calculate downside risk measures uh, using financial data in Excel. So the two measures of downside risk that we've looked at uh, in this course are the downside deviation and the value at risk or the VAR. I just want to go through those very quickly. So downside deviation first of all is a measure of the standard deviation of just those returns that are less than the mean. So the reason we might want to think about downside deviation is for one of two reasons. One is that the standard deviation of returns is actually valid where we can assume a normal distribution. That is, that the returns are perfectly symmetrical about that mean, or upside risk and downside risk are equivalent to each other. But if returns are not normally distributed, we've got an asymmetry, then uh, standard deviation actually uh, has some problems in that uh, it, it, it's only relevant under that assumption of normality. A second issue is we might have a normal distribution of returns. We might have perfect symmetry, but perhaps what we have is investors who uh, actually treat upside and downside risk separately. They've got different preferences for up and downside risk. And in that case, we need just a simple measure of uh, the downside risk or the downside deviation. And that's what we're going to look at here. So basically, downside deviation is a measure of the spread of observations just to the left-hand side of the mean or just to the negative side of the mean. There's two ways that we can do this. The first and the simple way is to look at the returns of my portfolio and to actually create a new column. And in that new column, I'm going to create an if function. Okay, I'm going to say equals if, if this value in this cell, in cell F3, is less than the average of all those values, okay, then report that, uh, report that value for me. If it's not less than the average, which obviously means it's greater than the mean, then just give me a blank cell. And that's, I've just got here, my inverted commas, which just means a blank cell. Now, one more thing to consider. I am going to drag this, this uh, cell down. So I want this reference here to, to become an absolute reference. So I want to put dollar signs in front of the, the column and row reference numbers. The easiest way to do that is to highlight the reference and press F4. And that will make it an absolute reference for me here. And I've got, uh, I've got that uh, value. So if I can drag it down, and what we can now see is that all these values uh, of monthly returns that are above the mean, those cells are now blank. All those values that are below the mean, that's now reporting those values for me. And what I can simply do is come across and take the standard deviation of that new column of values, and that will give me a measure of the downside deviation, so or just the, the standard deviation of just those negative events compared to uh, the standard deviation of the, all the observations or the distribution as a whole. Now there is an alternative. This, this alternative is a little bit more complicated, but for advanced users of Excel, uh, what you might note is that you can actually use an array formula to get the same result, and you can do it in one step without actually having to create this new, uh, this new row that I, uh, this new column, sorry, that I've done here. So the the way I would do it with a array formula is to write equals standard deviation. Okay, then I'm going to say if these values is less than the average value, okay, then report that series for me. Just want to show you what I'm going there. So I'm, I'm taking the standard deviation, but this is going to be an array. This if function here is saying to me, so for, for each of the values in uh, column F, if it, for, for any of those values that are below the mean, report those values for me. Now, because this part, the if function, is an array, that means it's not just reporting a single calculated value. It's actually going to give me a series of values, which I'm then going to take the standard deviation of. Uh, whenever I have that array, I can't just press Enter. To enter an array function, I have to hold down Shift, Control, and Enter together. And you'll see I'll get these additional brackets either side of the, um, of the formula bar there. But what you can see is when I do that array function, I actually get exactly the same answer as what I had before with my manually calculated downside deviation. Both are actually doing exactly the same thing. The array function does it in a single step, or alternatively, I can do it as a two-step process by first identifying those uh, returns that are less than the mean, then calculating the standard deviation of them. So if I was to do the array formula here for the uh, downside deviation of the market, so I'd write equals standard deviation, if these values are less than the average 
of that series, then report those values for me. Okay, so once again, the if function saying, give me the values from column H, but only those where uh, the values are less than the average. Again, I've done that shift control enter so that you can see I've got these extra brackets around the outside. It's an array formula and it will calculate downside deviation for me. The second measure of downside risk is the VAR. So what the VAR does is it can look at historical data and give us a measure of uh, you know, what's the worst case outcome based on what we've experienced in the past. So using historical VAR here, what I'm going to ask is I'm going to use my 5% VAR, which is from those returns, what is the fifth percentile of observations? Or what was the return that we got in the fifth percent of worst case outcomes based on the future, uh, based on the past, sorry. And we're using that as an estimate of what the potential for big negative drawdowns might be in the future. So to calculate very simply for VAR, we just write equals percentile. Uh, so open my brackets, my array, that's my series that I want to calculate the percentile of. Um, and I'm going to highlight my values in column F here, comma, and then I want my fifth percentile, so 0.05. I want the bottom 5% of values. And what I can see here in the, the, the cutoff point for the fifth percent uh, of worst outcomes and below, that cutoff point is a negative monthly return of 0.08 or 8% per month loss. Uh, and again, that's just, just giving me a, a downside risk exposure because it's giving me the, the magnitude of those big negative drawdowns. So I can do the same for the market. So equals percentile market returns, and I want the fifth percentile, 0.05, and I've got that downside risk measure uh, equivalent here, uh, which based on historic VAR is 0 0.066. Okay, so that's using downside deviation and historical uh, value at risk to get a measure of downside risk exposures.